This is kale. We also have some gobo burdock, some Swiss chard, and then on this end over here, we have cucumbers. You can see how healthy and happy that is. And even though we have so much of it, we'll, we'll use it all. It'll either be used by the rabbits, we'll feed it to rabbits, or we'll eat it. You're off just in time. This is a sheet that I bought at a secondhand store. It probably costs two dollars. It is a full size or a queen size? Probably a full. So it didn't cost anything. You can use polyester. It doesn't have to be a full cotton blend unless you want it to decompose faster. But there's the sheet. The palette is heat treated, which is pretty much what they all are nowadays. They're heat treated. And now I need to choose, do I want bigger holes or do I want smaller holes for my actual planting? The top part is going to give me narrower holes than the bottom. The bottom has, the, the underside has spaces about this big. This is probably the simplest garden bed you'll ever, you'll ever make. I just use a little staple gun to staple these on. We're gonna cover the sides and the bottom. The reason we cover the sides is so that the soil and everything doesn't fall out when we water. We have to be able to water very thoroughly because it's only gonna be about that deep, the soil and manure, um, combination so it will dry out really quickly if um, you don't water it thoroughly. Another thing you can do if you don't have a problem with bindweed is once you have the bed put down you can put sawdust up around the sides to keep the moisture in better. The bottom of the bed being in contact with soil will keep it from drying out better than if the bottom of the bed is in contact with plastic. The plastic just doesn't let an exchange of moisture back and forth. It doesn't let an exchange of worms back and forth. It doesn't let an exchange of anything back and forth. All right, so I wanted to show you, I'm bringing the fabric in a bit, and that's so that I can get more soil up under here. This part is sunk, sunk compared to, to this. I wanna fill the dirt up all the way and then water it and pack it in. I don't want this, I don't want it to be this low. I want it to be higher than that. And so I'm just creating a little bit of a lip here on the edge. And you can be as fancy as you want, but if you cut the fabric so that it's uh, gonna fit a certain, uh, so that it holds a little flatter, and it, mine is kind of lumpy. If you cut the fabric, it starts to, to wear, it unravels, and it, it doesn't have as much structural integrity, so fray. I don't cut it. Fray, thank you, it starts to fray. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna put rabbit manure in the bottom. Do you want to go get me a bucket of rabbit in your kiddo? Yeah. Little what bucket there? Uh, one of the bigger buckets, actually. Do we want to put this on the black plastic or do we want to leave it here? All right, so we're going to go ahead and move this. So you get that end. Okay, watch out for the pen. Just hold it here.
So the reason for the fertilizer on the bottom is that it will give bacteria to the soil. If you just put in potting soil, you don't have any bacteria in your soil. So we put in the rabbit manure and this, it, there won't be any rabbit manure like this on top when we're finished. We're gonna put in the rabbit manure so that there's about that much on the bottom all the way through. And then we're gonna put that much sawdust on top. And then on top of that, we'll put the potting soil. And so the time it takes for that sawdust to break down, the nitrogen in the rabbit manure will have calmed down. The, car the carbon in the sawdust will give a buffer for the roots of the plants so that they're not getting to the rabbit manure too quickly. And it'll mean that almost for free, we can fill this up and just have that much potting soil on the top instead of having six inches of potting soil, which would be very expensive. If your sawdust pile is in one place for too long, you'll actually get bindweed in your, in your sawdust. So you have to make sure that these don't go in when you're putting them into your bed because this will put bindweed right in your garden bed. Um, one load of sawdust cost me $200. It cost me $100 from the uh, sawmill for this much, but then I have to pay to have it delivered, which is another $100. So it's wonderful to have, but I, I have other methods that I like to use for most of my mulching because I try to have as little money go out as possible. You can't forget to get underneath the rungs of the pallet. Show them what you mean. Where do you mean get underneath? This. Up underneath the ledge. There you go. It has to go up underneath the ledge. Because there's a whole void. There's a whole void under here. So even though it looked like we put a whole lot in, it all has to go up under the ledge still. And we still have to leave space for dirt. Okay, so Paige is going to show you how to mix things up. So what, what ingredients do you use? So this one is peat moss. Uh, and then I use perlite. Uh, All-purpose, um, slow-release fertilizer. Yeah, uh, and then vermiculite.
we have the soil in now and we have a protective cage. You got one there at the bottom, but you're gonna need one more. Okay, it has sat overnight and I'm, I'm not gonna try and level it. I'm gonna try and like clear the, the wood part of it so I can see, but I'm gonna leave it mounted up like that. It is over time going to uh, sink, but now you can kind of see the outlines. I had some rhubarb babies that wanted to be happier. They were a little crowded and you can see they're getting distressed where they were. So, I'm gonna take that one off. And just make it a little simpler. So, I'm gonna go ahead and plant this. Anytime you, you plant something in summer, you need to cover it. So we're gonna take a white sheet and we're gonna lay it across this and put clips on it so that the sun is not too harsh on it while it's getting reestablished. This is the spot we took that rhubarb from. The hotbeds are great because they're warm, they have a lot of fertility in them, easy to hold the water in. These uh, Egyptian walking onions were crowding them out and then I have a cola plant here. And so that rhubarb was here in this little spot. There was plenty of space in here when I first planted it, but since then I've harvested all my garlic, I've put in new potatoes, and, um, and then the Egyptian walking onions really started to, to spread more. So sometimes the hotbeds just have a rotating um, door of plants going in and plants coming out. All right, so because it's so moist in there, let's see if you guys can even see this. Because it's so moist in there, this little guy has little roots on him. It never really dries out. I've got everything planted so compactly. I don't have to go in and pin anything. They just start to make roots. So I'm gonna go plant this in that bed. If I try to take out the parent plants, their, their root systems are so big and developed already that it's actually going to hurt them to put them into that bed. But if they're little like this when I put them in, they have, you know, all the space they want to put roots down. This is what they should look like. They've got lots and lots of roots. They've rooted down into the soil. That's what you want. Um, I'm doing it this time of year just because otherwise they'll go to waste. A lot of times what I'll do is take a fabric pin and pin these down in the bed so that they make contact because these little dark spots, that's the root trying to start, but they really haven't started well enough to support something like this. They just don't have the root system yet. This was still connected to, uh, to the parent plant by the runner, so I cut the runner, but I wanted you guys to see what it looks like when it's a really good one. and that's what it looks like and I will take that off and water early in the morning okay so that's how we do it if you were putting in seeds you'd put in seeds like you normally would I wouldn't put anything that's really deep rooted 
because you're going to find that you've only got eight inches at most, six inches is what it looks like, of space in your root zone. That's all you got, six inches. So you wouldn't want to plant carrots. Radishes would be fine. Um, anything with roots that spread out uh, horizontally underneath the soil would be good. So um, shallow rooted annuals would be super good in this, I think. Things like peas, maybe beans, definitely lettuce. And then what I'm doing is uh, strawberries. Um, strawberries are known for being difficult to keep weeded and uh, in this situation there's nothing to weed so I think it'll work really well. So, <laughs> so this is the one again this is the one that's already been planted and it works really well. We got cucumbers, onions, there's quite a few over here, honey. Just remember to twist instead of pull, okay? We've got um, Swiss chard, kale, and cucumbers, onions, that kind of thing. So thanks for popping in. <laughs> I got just in time. Uh, these beds are pretty common out there. If you want to know how to do my tall raised beds, which are a which are self-heating bed, I like to use them in, in winter. Then um, you can go over to my Etsy store to get the plans. But also the book by I think it's Mary Sprague is Stand Up and Garden, and that's where I got the original idea from it. I've modified it so that it doesn't lose water so much, and I use it as a hugel culture with wood instead of commercial straw. So, uh, but the idea I got from it was from Jack first and his book is Hotbeds and then I combined that with Mary Sprague's Stand Up and Garden and that's how I came about with a lot of these beds. So hopefully that was helpful. We'll talk to you later. Swiss chard is so important to us that we plant it in just about every bed at some point during the season. And we'll go give this to the goats, the goats have to be in their pen today eating just hay. Should we just go through the gate instead of the garage? We can. It'll not change your lighting. That's true. It will not change my lighting. <sighs> Honey, you're just putting it on there. Hey, you're not going to be up here all morning. Dump it all in. They just ate all those grapes. I gave them a couple bushels of grape leaves, grapevines this morning, so they may be green fooded out.